Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Reveal Report. I'm your host, George Iceman. It is one heck of a Friday, and uh, it's been one crazy day, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at least the past 25 minutes. So I thank you for being patient. This show, very close, did not happen. I'll tell you right now, it almost did not happen. Uh, so I'm going to try and push through with some of the technical issues and get into a very important topic. We're going to talk about the CERN Collider. CERN, for those that are new and don't know what it is, we're going to get into that. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being here. Like, subscribe, and share. And even to the haters who do hate, enjoy the show. You hate, but you still come on my platform to see what I got to say and what we disclose. So for all the haters, thank you. The least you can do is like it. That's the least you can do for watching my show. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got unbelievable information to discuss and um, we're going to get into it momentarily. I first want to thank those that give us a like, that give us a thumbs up, that support us on Twitter. Almost 12,000, folks. Thank you so much. Telegram, almost 10,000. On Instagram, uh, close to 4,000. And here on YouTube, I think we're just over 35,000 people because of you guys. So <laughs> thank you so much. You guys are incredible. Um, Des, thank you so much. Uh, Gabriella, I hope I'm saying your name correct. Jacqueline, thank you so much. Debbie, thank you so much. Patricia, thank you so much. All of you for being here in the chat, uh, and, and keeping the energy alive. And all of you have my permission. If you see any haters or negative, throw them out. All right, guys, you throw them out. You tell them they're not welcome here. I'll let you guys do the work and, and police and monitor because you guys are so great at what you do. It's one big family. Um, after the show, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are going to go to the Patreon and do a QA and a and a very special guest. One of my Patreons has been fasting for over 20 days. So we're going to talk about her experience in fasting, why she's doing it. 20 days. I do it for 24. I've done it for two. Uh, that's a lot. And she's going on 20 days. So God bless her. We're going to be talking to her on Patreon. And then we're doing a Q&A with me and Jesse exciting stuff on Patreon. Um, and thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you much for being here. Um, Jennifer, thank you so much. A lot of amazing people. Let me bring on my co-host. We're going to get into it. Um, please welcome, uh, author and of course, survivor, Miss Jesse Zabolder. Jesse, how are you? Hey, good, George. No, actually it's overcomer. <laughs> Overcomer, correct. Yes, Here we go. You got a lot going on. Uh, you're on different shows, but you also got your your book. You got your new series, um, video version, I believe. Maybe just touch on that briefly uh, on on what's going on with you and and what's the new project that's out for you. Yeah, the new project it should be out and live in a couple of weeks here. Uh, hopefully within a week or so. Uh, but we have it's Kingdom Living with Jesse .com. And I'll have my new courses on there, which are Foundations and Kingdom Living. So tune in because it's going to be great. Uh, the series is meant to really equip and prepare saints, um, not just for the battle, but, you know, in this battle, we have to understand about what is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of our enemy? What are our weapons of warfare? And how do we overcome the evil one? So that's really what this course is meant to do is to prepare you in those things. Absolutely incredible. And uh, shouts out again to our patrons. Just had a few new subscribers. And Michelle M for sending a, a little gift in the tip jar through PayPal. It means so much. It goes a long way. You know, Jesse, I said it. I went like three, four months. Not a single penny, not even a dime was given for that. But it was Patreon that was keeping this together. So all those that were members of Patreon because of them and their subscription – helped me doing the show on the Friday. And I was going to cancel the show, to be honest. I don't mind just doing it for Patreon members. But, um, you know, some of you came out flying and in a swinging, and uh, you sent a little something. And uh, it definitely inspired me to keep the show going on Friday for everyone here on YouTube. So thank you for, for all that. And Michelle M., thank you for starting off the night with a beautiful, uh, a beautiful donation uh, to keep the show going. All right, guys. CERN, the CERN Collider. What is CERN? Jesse... Let's discuss CERN for a moment. 
because it's in the news. And they had a new announcement that they made. We'll go into that. And there's something of a rainbow type of uh, phenomenon around the world. We're going to touch on that. This is CERN, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What is CERN? What is CERN, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let me just give you a quick rundown here. CERN, known for French pronunciation, derived from the name Council European. That's interesting. Its main function is to provide the particular accelerators and other infrastructure needed for high energy physics research. So it's basically about physics research, Jesse, and it's a collider that's very deep underground. And I'm going to show everybody a little bit of this collider on what it looks like. Here's a collider with somebody standing in front of it. This will come into play. That's the collider that's underground. And they've talked it's about the God particle, Jesse, is what they, they're trying to implement here. But what is it exactly? Well, it's important to realize, first, this collider has a name. They call it Alice. Um, but, you know, what is it? It's basically, you know, I've talked about the different projects, experiments uh, that the U.S. government and the worlds do with spiritual gates and portals. Um, we know that those portals, those spiritual gates operate off of sound, uh, harmony, light, uh, frequency, and, you know, in the old days, the, these uh, spiritual gates would be accessed through song and through multiple people singing. Uh, but they have found a way to be able to replicate um, the sound, the light, the frequencies mechanically, technically. So that's basically what Alice is. This collider is able to recreate and on the dime, you know, instead of them having lots of different choirs trying to do different sounds, getting everything correct, they've mechanically, um, you know, technically and through AI been able to replicate these things in order to operate multiple spiritual gates across the world. Now you say sounds, Jesse. So they would use sound to open up portals and gates. Correct. So now this CERN, they're using this energy somewhat of a portal. Now, again, I don't think me and Jesse sat in on a meeting. We don't know for sure. This is, you know, dissecting from occultic nature experience, maybe things that she's been told, stuff that I've studied. We're trying to bring forth because it seems nefarious in some of its visuality and its association and things that are associated with it. One of those things, Jesse... Now, I find it very strange. Again, it could be completely innocent, but I want your take on it. This was a gift given to CERN that is a statue right there at its building. And for those who don't know what this is exactly or its meaning, if you could maybe explain to everybody, Jesse, what this is. Yeah, I mean, it's a statue of Shiva. Um, which we know is a goddess um, replicating, you know, time, uh, space with the portal there and with the different flames, which um, I've talked in some shows. In fact, we broke it down in the big reveal that we did on the show with Nephilim, uh, where I talked about how they use these portals, how um, they're designed to have different breath sounds so literally this image um, is a recreation of some of the different breath sounds and the spirits that they connect to in order to use some of these portals and gates. Shiva, also known as the goddess of destruction, destruction, death, to devour, to destroy. Now, if something represents destruction, death, to destroy, why would CERN keep this on their property? Why would this represent something? What are they looking to destroy? Why would they have the goddess of destruction? That's its true meaning and origin, um, this goddess. And you can research that on your own. I find it fascinating with all the money that's been put into it. This is something that they have. Another thing, Jesse, and I didn't want to 
upload the video in case we got a strike like we did last week. But there was a mock sacrifice performed mm -hmm. by scientists and staff of CERN outside in the location. Why do you think they created some kind of mock sacrifice? And I'll add that they questioned them about that. It said it was supposed to be fun, a joke. Why would you create a yeah. joke and go through such costumes and elaborate um, ritual effects to make this a fun joke? Or do you not have time that, that you're so busy, but you could create a fake ritual? What are your thoughts on that, Jesse? Well, the reality is, is that these occultists, that everything is mirrored for them. And, you know, that's not the only place where they have, you know, fake rituals above ground, while at the same time, they're performing real rituals underground. Um, you know, Bohemian Grove is another area where people, you know, who get in or um, have gotten in what they see looks like a play or a performance above ground. But where are things really happening? The ritual really occurs underground. So, you know, I'll call the bluff on these scientists and, and say the truth is that they literally were offering a sacrifice to Shiva. And what was that sacrifice for? You know, it is indeed in her name, which, you know, they were making an offering so that she would go forth and help them destroy things. Wow. Do you believe it could have been an actual sacrifice? I do. I believe that wow. it would have happened underground. The real one. Yeah. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a little history, a little backup to CERN if you're new watching us. This machine that's underground, they want to create the God particle. But it's in the news recently. And I saw it and I was fascinated. So I want to touch on it because it's even on the front page. And I sent it to you, Jesse, didn't I? Yeah. I did. Let me just read a little bit from what they're talking about. The title on their front page is Extra Dimensions, Gravitations and Tiny Black Holes. So in our everyday lives, we experience uh, sparticle dimensions and a fourth dimension of time. How could there be more? They go into it. Uh, another way of revealing extra dimensions would be through the production of microscopic black holes. What exactly would we detect would depend on the number of extra dimensions, the mass of the black hole, the size of the dimensions, and the energy at which the black holes occur. This is real. This is on their front page. This is what they're talking about. Black holes opening up going against God's universe and try and break that, what we call the dome, so to speak. Um, there's another word biblically, I believe, for this dome over the earth. Uh, it's called the firmament. Mm -hmm. Are they trying to break this firmament, to get through it, to see what's on it? Well, Jesse, videos have been circulating. And I want to share this video with you right now. So I'm gonna play it for you, and I want you to take a look. Everybody, take a look. This is what's going on around the world, and I found it fascinating, so here it is. Now here's another angle.
absolutely incredible. What are your thoughts on that, Jesse? Yeah, um, you know, I think that, you know, they're trying to display spiritual gates. Um, it depends on where you're at or where you're standing, how they look. We know that scripture tells us that the sky will roll back like a scroll when the Lord comes. And I think that that's exactly how spiritual gates look when you're seeing them up in the sky or up in the firmament. Um, those are usually the upper gates. There are gates that are here on earth that uh, are accessed different ways. A lot of them, the military or other governments have control of. And so they would look more like Alice where, you know, they have a type of collider or a gate control for that spiritual gate that they're trying to operate. But what I think is interesting is that these ones that we're seeing in the clouds, I don't believe necessarily that CERN or anybody has control over the opening or the closing of those gates. I think that what we're seeing is the hand of God moving in some of that and him showing them that his he's almighty, he has power, he has control over these spiritual gates. It's it's an incredible time, ladies and gentlemen, to be alive because they're purposely in our face telling us they want to open up doorways, they want to open up portals. And I started just going through some of the movies that will talk about that. And one of them in 2009 was a movie that came out. And I saw fascinating movie and this movie you may have heard of before it's called angels and demons great movie <laughs> and in this movie one of the the actors and the director actually had the red carpet rolled out for them because they used filming and they used CERN and here they are that actor by the way is Tom Hanks <laughs> who's there with his uh, co-star and Ron Howard, the director. They were at CERN to do press release and so forth. And they did this movie. CERN was involved. And apparently, they tried to say that the Illuminati was coming back. They were trying to use it. But you see, movies are created as predictive programming. They tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And if you do nothing about it, you've given them permission. They told you what they were going to do. They told you we were going to open up portals and doorways. And in the movie, you actually see one helicopter go into the sky and explode this piece to open up somewhat of a doorway in some way, shape, or form. Angels and Demons, 2009, Jesse. What are your thoughts about this movie? Yeah, I mean, that it, it actually lays out their plans quite well. Um, we know that it's filled with the Illuminati beliefs. It goes into other, you know, comes out of another movie that begins to display those Illuminati Brotherhood beliefs. And this is kind of geared towards what happens in the last days, you know, really where they're showing that there's going to be this spiritual war between humans and fallen angels. And um, I encourage people to watch it if you want to know exactly what the enemy's plans are. Uh, that movie does outline a lot that's going to be happening, I think, pretty soon here. It's unbelievable, Jesse. And there's more. Now, this movie, not particularly kind of discussing CERN, but I found a lot of similarities. And it's a new movie. It's recent. But it's one of the most evil movies in so many ways discussing magic, there's actual demons. They make no mistake, actual demons in this movie. And there's a lot of undertones of the occult. And I wanted to share that with everybody watching and get your take on it, Jesse. The movie I'm referring to is this one. Dr. Strangelove, the multiverse of madness. Now you'd say, George, why would you mention this movie in conjunction with CERN? Well, that's a good question, Jesse. You see, here is him in his attic where he conducts all his magic. And if you take a good closer look at him in front of his so-called window, it has a startling resemblance mm -hmm. to CERN. Now, that could be me. I could be jumping to conclusions, and I can be. But I find it unbelievable. That's the image 
that's CERN. That's what they're doing. Are they telling us something? Well, through this movie, Jesse, he opens up gateways. He does battles. Now look at carefully at the symbolism around his neck. Yeah, sort of a the green, eye of Horus. The eye of Horus with a green stone, the color green. Now, why do you think the stone would be green, Jesse? Well, because that was the color of the stone that supposedly the archangel Michael um, hit out of Satan's breastplate when he cast him out of heaven or out of heaven. Wow. You just broke some news here, Jesse. Yeah. So that is the symbol of why they're using that stone. This is unbelievable. He does magic yeah. in this movie, Jesse. You can see here conducting his spells. Yeah, which represents blood magic that looks like, you know, solemn. There's a lot of solemnic yes. magic that's in this movie and a lot of blood magic um, ties and themes in there as well. Incredible. Here it is. Again, if you look carefully, it's almost like the world's upside down. Wait a minute. This is similar to ideology I studied through Aleister Crawley. As above, as so yeah. below. What are your thoughts on that, Jesse? Uh, I agree. Um, you know, there is a lot of Aleister Crawley stuff as well, but he was heavy into the Solomonic and the Enochian magics, um, which are, you know, Angel. tied in with a lot of those things you're talking about. Here's another one. And, and he legitimately, ladies and gentlemen, he does battle with demons. It's, I think the movie, I think they call them actual demons. And there's a visual. Here he is doing battle with demons. They don't hold it back. They're telling you these are demons. He's going into portals to do battles with the supernatural world. And here is actually what the demon looks like. Look at this. It's in the movie. He's even got horns. Demons in another multiverse. Does this have anything to do with CERN and what CERN's trying to do? Opening up portals. Jesse, what are your thoughts on this? I, I would agree. I, you know, I believe that CERN has been used by our U.S. military. Um, and get ready for it, George. Yep. Um, they have used it so that they can do spiritual warfare in other dimensions. So I believe that's you know, that's really one of the basis behind CERN. In fact, the exact project that they're connected to that um, when they talk about the God particle, the project behind that is the Voice of God project, uh, where they're trying to um, recreate that initial breath sound, which was the Lord's voice speaking all things into creation. And why do they want that? They believe that if they have that, that they will be gods. So it's part of usurping the throne of God um, is by trying to capture God's voice. Uh, we know it's not going to happen, but that's yeah. what they believe. Yeah. They truly believe, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make this up, to bring the Antichrist, to bring Satan to this earth. Listen to me very carefully. Whoever is watching this, that is part of that order, you know. You haven't been able to summon him in a long time. You know this. So what makes you think through movies and the evil going around the world that you're trying to commit, you're going to open up a doorway and he's going to come through? What makes you think that? Think about who's really in control, and that's God Almighty. I will right. refer to God Almighty. Another character in this movie, Jesse, we got to make reference. I saw it, and I was like, it's magic. Take a look at this. This person in this movie right here, ladies and gentlemen, I find it absolutely incredible. This character is the strange love witch. She's the witch in the movie, the Scarlet Witch. I was like, the yeah. Scarlet Witch. But if you see, Jesse, she's got candles in front of her. And she's sitting in a particular way. Well, I can personally tell you that that's a summoning. That's a ritual of magic. Mm -hmm. And here's another picture of her. Oh, Jesse, we need to have the one-eyed symbolism here, of course, to make the it. The one-eyed symbolism and the horns, and the but horn. it also represents the wings or the owl, um, the owl's wings. And 
There she is in all her glory doing magic. And I thought, this looks like a spell. This looks like she's doing some type of magic. Well, in one of the video clips, she comes to kids and she says, I'm not a monster. Like she was telling them, I'm, I'm not a monster. I'm like, like a mother. And it was a, a, a comment made on a show that I seen and it made me go bananas doing research and I found it. Ladies and gentlemen, Thelema, the scarlet woman, the great mother, the mother of abomination is a goddess found in the occult system of Thelema, which is established in 1904 with the writing of the book of the law by author and occultist Alistair Crawley. Ladies and gentlemen, it could be me, but are they referring to this as a mother? We're talking about the mother of mothers, the one that Alistair right. Crawley uh, talks about, the Scarlet Woman, because she's referred to in this movie as the Scarlet Witch, the great mother, the mother of Which goes back to, uh, you know, a famous mother, but even all of, you know, that's why that term is so particular in the occult where you've got the mothers of darkness, you have the mothers um, who are the mother goddesses over regions and areas, and who are they giving allegiance to by that title? Um, they're giving allegiance to Nimrod's mother. So this goes all the way back to those ancient days of Babylon um, where he honored his mother, but more than honor, he worshiped her as a goddess um, because she had you know, Ashtaroth, who was known as the queen of heaven, one of the demonic principalities. Wow. I mean, it's perplexing, Jesse. This is in movies. This movie, if you're a Christian, there's some things in it you might not fully support. So I'm not going to tell you to watch the movie um, because there's certain things in it that you might not want to see. But part of my thing is to do the research. And a lot of symbolism here that's come out. Uh, so I wanted to touch on it because there is a resemblance to CERN. And I said, you know what? They're doing something here. CERN, portals, magic, summoning demons, doing battle in other dimensions. Now you have said that this is something they actually do. They want to be gods in these other dimensions and use spiritual warfare. Touch on that for a moment, please, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the bigger connection with it is, is that, you know, they want to elevate themselves ab above God. And the truth behind that is that, you know, all throughout history, the Lord has promised that he would send his son who would die for our sins and that he would be our savior. He would be the lamb um, who was shed, whose blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And we know that Israel did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah, that they were always instituting, um, you know, somebody else as their God. Um, in the beginning, they had the, a relationship with the Lord where he talked with them. He literally led them. It says, you know, he appeared as a cloud by day and a fire by night to lead them. And he even spoke to them, but there came a point where they said, we don't want to hear your voice. We don't want, you know, to deal directly with you. We don't want to speak directly to you, speak only to your prophets or speak to us through your prophets. So the same concept has been going on through all these generations that Israel really has forsaken God and sought to become their own gods. And the epitome of this is really what's happening with Israel now. Um, you know, what what have they been doing um, in Babylon or the old Babylon um, under Nimrod's hill? Well, that's where they have um, their Genesis 6 project, where they are playing not only with time, space, dimensions, but they're playing with souls. They're playing with creating the perfect human being um, doing genetic manipulation, um, you know, trying to be gods in themselves and get to that point where they're perfect and they don't need a savior. They don't need a God. I mean, there are still 
going through the gods of Babel, Baal yeah. worship, and um, the evil that's around it. I, we did a show uh, a few months ago, Jesse, and we got into stuff. We got, we, I got into like Christmas and the meaning behind it and uh, these ancient gods and the bloodline and the connection. We talked about this. Right. And you, after all these years, they're still at it. <laughs> they still are. It's been going on for over what, I mean, it, it began before Father years. Abraham came out of Canaan. So yeah. Close to 7,000 years now they've been worshiping other gods and um, anything that is not the true God or the true Lord, and they've raised themselves up to be gods. Yeah, it's perplexing. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, many of these demonic beings that they are trying to worship and summon are not responding. There is something going on in the spiritual realm in the spiritual world, in the supernatural, and they're not responding. God must be interceding, which means he's hearing our prayers. So we need to continue to be in prayer, to give glory to God, and not allow Satan and his minions to enter our realm and wreak havoc. We won't have it. We're looking for a jubilee and a time of peace. So Jesse, I got to say, before we end off the show, if you could maybe say a prayer of protection to our world, to our people, to our universe from these spiritual attacks so that we can have strength and power to do battle in the spiritual realm. Yeah, I definitely will say the prayer, but first I'll also share some news. Um, you know, exactly what you're saying has been happening, that the Lord has been giving the authority and the power to the true church, his ecclesia, to be able to take back dominion, jurisdiction, and authority from the fallen ones. Um, it started with the anointing project where people were going out anointing the land. The next thing now that the Lord has been opening up the door for is that he's been allowing us to take authority over the wellsprings. Uh, these are the ancient waterways that he had created. They go all the way back to pre-flood. Um, those waterways the enemy has been using as, you know, the spiritual gates as access ways and the Lord has had enough. And so he's allowing communities um, to bring their cases before him and to say, Lord, we're taking full responsibility for these wellsprings. And we're asking now that these wellsprings will be filled with living water. Uh, this is the living water that the Lord promises in his word that will break forth in the last days. He says that in those last days that the deserts uh, will break forth with living waters and, and living springs. And so that's already begun happening. So I'm excited to report that. Um, you know, keep watching for that because uh, it's happening in a lot of communities and in a lot of places. So yeah, let's yeah. pray. Go let's ahead. pray, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just you, you do the honors. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Heavenly <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your power, your might, your glory. You alone are worthy of all honor, all praise, all glory. And we just bow humbly before you because this really is not a battle between us and the evil one. This is about the evil one who has been contending since the very beginning against you. And you have said enough that you have given him permissions long enough and now you are stepping forward. You are answering the prayers of your saints. And you have said that in these last days, you are about to release signs, miracles, and wonders. Because by your blood, you have purchased us to be a royal priesthood. And so, Lord, we just come. And we ask that you would give us a boldness and a new strength today. That everybody here... Um, would feel empowered and would know the authority that they have in your name. And your word says that your kingdom is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power and it is coming in power. So we just thank you for that, Lord. And we sit back um, ready to do your will, Lord, as you command it. We pray all these things in your name, Yeshua. Amen. Incredible. Jesse. Big news. 
breaking news, massive news. If you've been watching my show, you know that we bring on guests and some really stand out. And one of the most popular guests we've ever had is an author, a gentleman by the name of Gary Wayne. And the great news is he's back, Jesse. He will be right here at the reveal next Friday. And we're going to get into awesome. this battle of the supernatural, of this bloodline, angels, demons, giants. We're going to get into it. And uh, we're going to have a great round table, myself, you, and Gary Wayne. I warn everybody to tune in. He is incredible. He's a... Uh, uh, such knowledge and he brings a different yeah. perspective than Jesse. So it's amazing to have these two individuals at this round table right here live next Friday. So we're going to have everybody to tune in. It's going to be amazing. I promise you. Uh, it will be like, um, like going to Harvard university or one of those popular universities. So get your notepads, get your pens. It's going to be incredible. Jesse, tell everybody where they can find you and support your ministry. Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Patreon. You also can find me on Twitter at Zaboder Jesse. And then um, on my new website, which is Kingdom Living with Jesse.com. And you also can purchase my books on Amazon.com. And those are His Kingdom Comes in Power, The Anointing Overflows, and Five Minutes of Grief with God. Amazing. And guys, you could join me exclusively every Friday here on YouTube, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, and then the after show, 9 p.m. on Patreon. The link is in that description. If you want to join, join me and Jesse for a Q&A. Ask some of your questions. And of course, we have a special guest coming in to join us to talk about her fasting experience. And also Monday, if you'd like to know a little bit of uh, the uh, uh, a different perspective on news headlines and what's happening Tune in uh, and, and watch my new segment every Monday on Patreon. And if you like to support this show and help keep it on YouTube, please go to paypal.me forward slash George Iceman. That's paypal.me forward slash George Iceman. It's right there in the description. Anything helps and goes a long way to keep this show going. Gary Wayne next week live. Me and Jesse, it's going to be incredible. Uh, on that note, like, subscribe, share. We hope you have an amazing weekend. Get outside, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. Most importantly, give grace, glory, and praise to God Almighty. Thanks for watching. 